How's it going, y'all? It's Ben Aqua, and I'm gonna do something a little different today and talk about my 2017 Prius 2. This has been my favorite car for the last four years, and I thought I'd do a long-term review of this car. Should you get the 2017 Prius? How does the 2017 Prius stack up in 2021? So let's go. The main reason I got this Prius was of course the amazing miles per gallon. It gets 55 miles per gallon overall. And I will say that I drive pretty conservatively. Some people say I drive kind of slow and almost too defensively. But that aside, this car has gotten amazing gas mileage and that is my number one reason why of course I would recommend this Prius. Even a 2017 model, you know, it's not the most recent model out there of course. It doesn't have the most recent Bluetooth or CarPlay or Android auto it doesn't have any of that stuff it's kind of a more kind of no frills type of car for someone who's looking for something that is incredibly economical and is incredibly reliable and let's talk about reliability because that is probably my number two reason why i love this prius and why i've kept it this long it's incredibly reliable you know i haven't had a single weird issue there's been no engine light nothing wrong with the brakes you know nothing wrong overall everything just has worked incredibly well on this car with zero maintenance other than just the normal scheduled maintenance every 3,000 to 5,000 miles. Let's go ahead and power the Prius on because it's as easy as pressing this power button and having your foot on the brake of course. AC controls are down here. I live in Texas. This is extremely important. <laughs> this particular Prius does not have dual zone temperatures. We have a really gigantic digital speedometer over here that just makes it so easy for when you're driving and you just want to quickly see how fast you're going, but you don't want to like look down here or look down there. You know, I really like that it's actually in the center and it's kind of above in the console area. Down here, you'll see drive modes. And when you press these buttons, you'll see up here, it changes to a normal mode, which is a little more zippy. And then there's also a power mode, which is surprisingly fast, like kind of shockingly fast. And if you press it again, it goes back to that normal eco mode. On the steering wheel, I love this layout. It's, you know, it's not the fanciest looking thing in the world, but it's very logical. Like all the audio controls are over here on one side and you can do voice controls on here, call people, etc. The voice controls are not very good in my opinion. The system is not as fancy as something like Siri or something. Then on the other side of the steering wheel are these buttons over here for a lane departure assist thing, which I don't really use because it got kind of annoying honestly. And there's also adaptive cruise control right here. The adaptive cruise control is amazing for road trips. It automatically senses how far cars in front of you are. So you can basically take your foot off of the acceleration and let the car kind of do the driving for you. Of course, you still have to hold the wheel and stuff. It's not that fancy. I really like this layout. I think it looks kind of futuristic still in 2021. And you know, the screen is, I think, a six inch screen and it's not the best quality screen in the world. Like when you go in through the menus and stuff, it's still pretty responsive. So it makes more sense for like the newer Priuses and the RAV4, Highlander, Siennas and stuff like that, they, that they move the screen up here and they made the screen bigger. So it's more in your line of sight and it's just a lot easier to use it versus down here, which feels a little antiquated at this point. So of course I got the all black interior and I have the cloth seats, which are pretty comfortable. Like the comfort overall is actually really good on this Prius. The seats feel pretty comfortable overall. You know, they have enough padding. My biggest complaint about these seats though, is they don't have a whole lot of lumbar support. So back there you can see a back pillow, which I actually use one of these lumbar support back pillows when I'm driving normally. This makes a huge difference. And if you get this Prius, I would highly recommend getting one of these back support pillows. For me, this was really vital towards making the driving experience more comfortable. This little console, the center console area is pretty tiny. It goes down kind of deeply, but it's really narrow and you can't really fit a whole lot of stuff down there. So if you have like a giant purse or a backpack or something, it's definitely not going to fit, but it is big enough to put, you know, a small bag in there pretty safely and hide that. And also this little compartment here is so tiny. I mean, you can really just fit 
just a few things in there. It's really not that big. There are these little side areas over here, you know, where you can put another drink here and like a little thing here. But after that, there's really not a whole lot of space where you can put your phone or other things. You know, there's only two drink holders here, which are kind of tiny. There's also nothing fancy about the rear view mirror. I mean, it's just a normal rear view mirror. It doesn't have automatic dimming. Above here, there's lights, of course, and then there's a little compartment where you can put sunglasses or whatever. You can also manually control each light. But here is one of my least favorite parts about the Prius. So the sun blocking here works okay, but this does not extend. There's all this space right here. So when the sun is coming through here, there's nothing to extend this out. It feels like an afterthought. It feels kind of cheap and makes the car feel less premium to me. And the same goes for this one over here. There's no extender. There's a pretty good amount, almost a foot of space over here where the sun can just come right in and blind you. One of my favorite things about the Prius is also how quiet it is. Like, let me turn off the AC right now. And the car is actually on. You hear how quiet? There's nothing. I don't hear a single thing, but I can put this into drive mode and start moving. And there's no noise. However, when you're driving around in this car, it does pick up a pretty good amount of road noise. And it's not the most well-sealed car, in my opinion, especially when you're on the highway. It can be really, really loud. And it's not the smoothest ride either. It definitely picks up a lot of the bumps on the ground. Another thing I really like about this Prius is the visibility, I think is really, really awesome because it has that kind of extreme slant in the front. You can see out of the windshield pretty well. You can also see over here, it's pretty easy to see your blind spot and stuff. This is what it looks like while you're driving. The back windows, the rear windows of the Prius leave a lot to be desired though. There's not a huge amount of visibility there and you can see there's that bar that goes across which can be kind of annoying that it blocks the view but it also blocks headlights of the car behind you at night. I also really like that this car has a lot of space in the back so when you put the seats down as I did you can see that it folds almost completely flat. There's a little bit of an angle um, if you're thinking about sleeping in your car, which I have done and I did a video about that before, but I'm five foot ten and I can actually sleep in this entire area right here without having to bend my knees or anything. So there's actually a really good amount of cargo space and I've used this a few times to like move to a different house and to haul giant pieces of wood and furniture and stuff. And there's a surprising amount of cubic feet in this Prius. Also down here, this is pretty similar to a lot of other Priuses and cars, but there's a little bit of storage underneath here. And then underneath that, a spare tire. So another negative about this car is it makes a lot of beeping noises. It beeps for just about everything. And the biggest annoyance in this car when I first got it was when you put the car into reverse, you hear that there's that one beep. When I first had this car, the beep would just go beep, beep, beep as if you were like a construction vehicle. And yes, there is a reverse backup camera right here, which is really, really handy. But yeah, the reverse beeping was so annoying that I actually went to my Toyota dealership and I was like, what can you do about this? And they said, for $50, we'll just reduce that beep to just one beep when you go into reverse. So let's drive a little bit in this car so you can get kind of a real world view of what it's actually like. So you put the car into drive like that and then you're ready to go. So we are going. And it has a pretty smooth ride overall. You know, it can be a little bit noisy, but you can hear a little bit of road noise immediately start to come into the car. But once you get on the highway and stuff, it starts getting a lot heavier, a lot noisier. So now we're going up a pretty steep hill and the car does start to struggle a little bit here. You can see how much power I'm using right now that I'm in the red zone because I'm using basically all the power my car has right now. But then as soon as I let go a little bit, I go back into that eco zone. And if I let my foot completely off of the gas, you can see that it goes into this EV mode. So I'm not using any gas right now. And that's the hybrid system at work. But this little indication right here has helped me a lot actually discern how I'm driving. So it tells you, you know, when I'm using more power, it tells you when you're using less power and you get rewarded from coasting and braking because it goes down. You can see right now, it goes into that blue charge area down there. 
So I've actually learned a lot about how I drive and better ways to drive more eco-friendly and efficiently for your car. Depending on where you're living, I live in Texas, but it's only about $20 to fill up a tank and then you can drive for about 500 to 550 miles on one tank for $20. That's incredible. The Prius feels like you're kind of driving on the ground though. It feels pretty low to the ground for my taste and it makes me kind of crave a larger vehicle which is why I'm kind of leaning personally towards getting a RAV4 hybrid. And there are times where I'll be at a stop sign and I can't tell if there are any cars coming from my left or my right and I have to kind of guess and it makes me really nervous. There's like a car park there or a giant bush or something. You really have to like lean forward and be like, is there something coming? Am I about to just plummet to my death? So anyway, those are some of my very non-technical thoughts on the 2017 Prius 2. If you have any questions for me, let me know in the comments below. And also let me know what car is your favorite car to drive in 2021. So I'd love to see y'all down there in the comments. Smash that like button if you found this video useful. Always appreciated. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.